So one of the questions I'm most frequently asked after people watch my field photography how-to videos is what is that funky looking tripod head that you're using out there? It doesn't look like the ball heads that we're used to seeing in these videos. And that's true, it's a fluid head used by filmmakers more than photographers. And I first was introduced to fluid heads, I was working on a documentary film crew climbing Denali for a film called An American Ascent, and because we were climbing a 20,000 foot peak, we had to really pare down on weight, and we all shared a Sackler fluid head, like the one that's on my tri tall tripod back behind me, on that trip, and when I got home and returned to my ball head, I was using an Arca Swiss ball head at that time, along with a, with a Acrotec Ultimate ball head when I needed really lightweight, I just found I was really unsatisfied. There's some things that a fluid head do for you that you just can't get from a ball head. And I think that for those who know what a fluid video head is, there's a lot of misconceptions, like it's really heavy, it's really complicated, it's more than I need. Not true at all. Also, not expensive. You know, it doesn't need to be expensive. Now, that Sackler is expensive and I love it, but it's also heavy and I don't always carry it with me. More often than not, I take this one that I'm gonna talk about. And I wanna just say right up front, everything I talk about in this video, there's gonna be links for you to be able to easily go and find it on the blog page that's associated with this video on my website. So if you're watching this on YouTube or someplace else, HudsonHenry.com, go to the blog, search for Fluid Head, you're gonna find it. So this is a Manfrotto, uh, really lightweight fluid head. It's only two pounds with everything you see here. That includes the plate that we would attach to the camera, your lens, this video using, this video handle for smooth pans and tilts. The fluid part refers to, there's, there's a fluid mechanism here that lets you do really smooth motions like you see in film. If you're, if you're watching a film and you see the camera moving with the subject, that fluid just keeps you moving really smoothly in your tilts and your pans. May not be so important if you're not interested in using your still camera for video, but with the convergence of still and video, it's also really fun to be able to have to track the kids moving through Christmas, you know. So just a cool little, little tidbit. One of the great things I love about it is how simple it is to level and to stay level once you're in position where you wanna photograph a scene or film a scene. So all I have to do to get level, there's a, there's a level bubble right here, bubble level, built into the head, and all I have to do is loosen this bowl adapter beneath the tripod, level it, tighten, and then every motion I make, the camera stays level. I have two locking points. I have one point that I can lock it so that it won't pan left or right. I have another point where I can lock it so it won't tilt up and down, or I can just loosen both of them. And you'll notice how my camera isn't moving once I, once I loosen those. Well, that's because the way that a fluid head is built, it has a plate that slides forward and backward. You can pop that whole plate out just like you could any Arca Swiss plate that you're used to using for still photography. Most videographers mount it directly to their camera or to their lens, but what you do is once you've got the given camera and lens that you're using on here, you just slide it backward and forward until you got a balance point, and you can leave the whole thing completely loose, and it won't go anywhere. So you don't have to worry about the traditional flop that you think about. Now another really cool thing about that forward and aft slide, if you're a person who likes to do panoramics, and now I, I don't attach the camera directly to the plate. I still use Arca Swiss clamps. I attach an Arca Swiss clamp to the plate and then I'll, I'll attach another one so that I can flip between having a, a tripod or a, a lens foot that's aligned in the same plane as the camera lens or one directly on the L bracket that I use on my camera. So I just clamp a clamp and a clamp <laughs> essentially. These are really cheap. These little clamps are like $30. I'll have a link to it. So I can just go vertical here for a panoramic and you mark where you want that plate for different nodal points of different lenses and you go ahead, lock your tilt where you want it and just move through the scene doing a panoramic. Really, really easy. Multiple rows are no more difficult than anything else. You move that, that clamp that I have here to the center point, pull the camera off and I can, I can really simply throw my advanced multiple row panoramic nodal point adapter in here, attach the camera, slide it back and forth for whichever lens I'm using, and run through a series of, of multiple row panoramics. That easy. I'll be doing a video on nodal point really soon and on advanced panoramics, so just stay tuned for that. Yet another 
really cool feature of this is if you use long lenses and you shoot birds and wildlife. So this particular lens is a 400 millimeter Nikon. It just lives in my bag with one of these fluid head plates on it. I can go ahead, just drop this lens in like so, lock it, lock the head. slap my camera on here. And if I'm shooting birds or wildlife, get myself level. Once I get it balanced, like we talked about, I'm pretty close here, maybe a little forward. I let go, nothing's happening. Yet, this thing can move through space just like a gimbal head. So for those of you who've seen the big birds and wildlife photographers with their gimbal heads, this is doing exactly the same thing for you. You can track birds in flight, follow that basketball player on the court, whatever it is you're doing that's moving, you can track it really easily with this. I think a lot of people have a misconception that these are big, heavy, complicated beasts, these tripod heads, or that they have to buy a bunch of things that they don't already have or learn something new. The reality is it's a simple knob to, to lock the pan, simple knob to lock the tilt, loosen both, they're both working for you. Simple plate, just like you're used to with Arca Swiss plates. This handle that videographers use, and I actually like to use because I do some video too, easily comes off and you can still use the head just like you would a normal ball head. Really piece of cake. This particular head can mount either in a bowl, so a, head, a, a tripod with a bowl adapter. This one has a bowl, which makes it really easy to level. You saw how I leveled at the beginning of this video. And I recommend everyone think about a bowl tripod set of legs because even if you're, using, uh, if you're using a ball head and you have a leveling adapter with a bowl, it's really easy to get level and then pan and not have to worry about re-leveling every time. <clears throat> this particular one though, actually, I have a bowl adapter on this head and you'd simply loosen this guy and it's, it's designed to fit on any tripod just like the legs that you have with your, with your ball head. And it only weighs 900 grams. So compare that to the infamous Really Right Stuff BH55, which is 890 grams, but doesn't include the top plate and the handle. So this thing with its plate on there and its handle is 10 grams heavier. You take the, take the handle away, it's a lighter tripod head than a BH55. It's also only $135. I'll put a link into it. Um, just a really great little piece of kit. I'm going to show you some comparisons to the only ball head I have left is this, is this Acrotech ball head. And the reason I have it is it's ultra light. If I'm doing a ski mountaineering trip or if I'm carrying another tripod to do uh, time lapse or, or, or something else and I need just a lightweight head with me in the field and I'm traveling light backpacking, this only weighs a pound and it holds 15 pounds. So it's a really nice little weight for uh, punch for the weight ball head. But I just want to show, I'm going to switch lenses back to my smaller Zeiss lens here. If I'm on this tripod head and I get in a scene that I want to compose slightly differently after I've gone to all the work of leveling and everything, you know, this, this whole thing goes wonky and I can't really easily, I have to make sure I turn on the level on the back of the camera or mount a level up here and make sure that I'm nice and level, the horizon looks straight every time I recompose. Just a little bit more complicated but propagated throughout a photo shoot, it's a lot of time saved by having that simple mechanism. Uh, another thing is if you're, if you're at all doing video, trying to track with a ball head and keep level is just impossible when you're filming. You're gonna get off left and right. It just is something you can't do. So if you do any film work, you're really gonna benefit from the fluid head. Plus you just can't smoothly move, it's jerky. There's gonna be slight variations in speed and that fluid keeps you moving smoothly with the fluid head. Um, another thing is panoramics. If I'm gonna do panoramics with this head, I'm gonna to have to put a panoramic clamp adapter in here to stay level and move back and forth through my panoramic. So that's built into the fluid head. Just a whole bunch of little things. You know, it weighs a pound less, sure, but if I wanna shoot, 
sports and wildlife with a long lens, I'm gonna need to add something like this or have a completely different gimbal head. This is a Wimberly Sidekick. The only reason I still have it is because I haven't made this video yet. I'm gonna sell it as soon as I'm done with this video because I, I just don't need it with the fluid head anymore. This is what I used to use on safari or on birds and wildlife shoots. And it clamps into your existing head and then you can put a lens like this 70 to 200 in here with a foot. I'm gonna make sure it's locked. Mount the camera up and get my dot ready there. And now you've got that same functionality that we had, although I'm not, I'm not totally level. See now, here's one of the problems. I've gotta get level too, so I have to use the legs to level this. Really complicated. There we go. And I've got this thing in my way of getting to the controls on the lens. It works beautifully. If I loosen my pan here, I can track moving birds, but it's just, it's just more complicated. And by the time you add this to your kit, you've just completely destroyed the weight savings that carrying this with you, along with a lot of space in your bag. So I think you're probably getting the idea why I favor this, and I think more still photographers should a good fluid head saves time and simplifies everything that I do.